The owner of this house is a young single guy, so I really wanted the design to not only suit his needs, but appeal to his more masculine style. You know, as I was designing a space, I was really trying to keep my client in mind. I wanted this space to feel like a bachelor pad, but I also wanted it to just be an inspiring space for him as well. This is just a really nice, functional space for my client, and what I like about it is that we did a lot of heavier colors in this room, they're darker, so anywhere I could do some open shelving to make it feel a little more light and airy, I think it was really important to implement that. You know, I really love these double islands. You know, he's got this cool industrial sink, concrete countertops. I just feel like this is a great space for entertaining. A lot of the times when you have one large island, you've gotta walk all the way around, so I think with this, even though this kitchen is really large, these two islands really help define the space. One of my other favorite things about the kitchen is the recessed ceiling above. A lot of the times in these older houses that we're doing renovations on, you see this recessed ceiling with fluorescent lighting in them. This is just a simple way to update that look. The reclaimed wood in here ties really well with all the open shelving and these islands. I just think this kitchen is a great balance of modern and ranch. There's not too much of either style, but I think it's just a really perfect blend. And I feel like even though we chose darker colors, it still has a light and airy way about it. You know, I really think one of the most important things about a home is the first impression, the curb appeal. You know, in this case, we had a really long, dated, ranch-style house. So the challenge was updating this house, but also drawing it out so it didn't seem just like a really long house. So a few of the things I played with was the landscape. I really wanted to give it a fresh, pop of color, but I also wanted to keep it simple for the client. I used a variety of grasses, but I also chose this little rock pathway, which obviously is very low maintenance, but it also adds texture to the landscape that I think really makes it pop. One of my favorite things we did on this porch was really draw it out. And one of the things I really wanted to do was really beef up these columns. So we added a rock skirt, this great concrete ledge, and then these really pretty cedar posts. The key is that your eye goes to the center of the house, which is the porch. And I think all these elements really brought this home alive. You know, I really think it added a substantial amount of curb appeal, and I really feel like now this house is set apart. I really enjoyed working on the Ridley Project. It was a chance to transform three rooms into one living space. He really wanted a wide open space to entertain in for friends and family. We ended up eliminating all the walls in this main living space to create a really nice wide open space for him. You know, this used to be the formal living room and now I love that all the walls are gone, it's open up, and this is now his dining area. What's really great about this, he's got these really pretty nice new windows that look off to the front porch and the front yard. So I think this is just a great setting to entertain family and friends. One of the main things you need to keep in mind when you're designing a wide open space like this is to make sure that the design in each space is consistent with each other since it's all in one room. What I really love about this space in here is that even though now we're in the living room, you've got the concrete hearth that ties in with the countertops, you've got the reclaimed wood that ties in really well with the island and the recessed ceiling. I had to keep in mind what was happening with the kitchen, the dining room, and the entry so that it all felt consistent and there was a really nice flow. The Zan family home needed a total renovation, but one thing we did not need to fix was the beautiful view. The scenery outside of this home inspired my design throughout the home, especially the main living space. One of the things I love about this room is just how wide open it is and how simple the colors are. There's contrast, but it's really clean because really when you look out every window, there's just a beautiful view and I didn't want what was going on in here competing with what you see outside the window. So as you can see, we trimmed out all the windows and the doors with a really natural trim, cedar wood. I think it gives it a really clean, simple contrast and where I wanted it to be a little more bold, I accented it with a really pretty satin color black. Over here in the living room, I just really love how it's kind of the anchor of this room. It's really symmetrical, it's clean, it's classic. Again, it focuses on what's beyond these walls, which is the view in the backyard. Come check out the dining room. 
You know, I was really strategic about where I placed the dining room in this new layout. It's front and center, it's under this really cool chandelier, and then the backdrop is this amazing open kitchen. But what I love about this table is my client said this is where she would eat when she was a little kid at her granddad's table, and so the fact that we got to restore it, put it back in this house, I think it was really meaningful to our clients. When designing the living room for the Ferguson family, I created the open concept that they asked for and made distinctive cosmetic updates to the room so it matched their style and their needs. So originally in the space, there were really thin columns and then just some white railing, and I really wanted to beef the columns up, make them more substantial, a little more formal. So we removed the railing altogether to really open up the space and then trimmed out the existing columns. This originally was a set of French doors that led out to the sunroom. Now we've created this double-sided fireplace, put some really pretty quartzite here, and then did a really pretty trim around it to make it have a clean but pretty elegant look. Over here with the stairs, you know, they had the dated railing, so we removed the existing railing. We just came back with a really clean, simple railing, but I just think the blend of the white, the natural, really pretty wood mixed with the gray trim, you know, it ties in now to the updates of the house. Originally in the Zan house, the kitchen was partially a breakfast nook and closed off to the rest of the house. It just wasn't practical for my client. So we opened it up, gave them a bigger, more inviting kitchen, but also put some thoughtful details into the design to make it more functional. You know, I tell people when they're designing their kitchen, they don't have to give up function over form. It's really a blend of both, really thinking practically through your space and how you need it to work for you, but also making sure you incorporate elements that you really love and that are true to your style. I love open concept kitchens. What I like about this space is that it's really a U-shaped kitchen. So you've got your sink here, you turn around, you've got your stove. I really wanted to think through the layout for my clients. When I'm designing a kitchen, I like to design it around the stove. I really like the rock backsplash because it's subtle, but it gives off a lot of texture. The vent hood is cool, it's a stucco vent hood. You know, one of the things that really illustrates the idea of form and function is the idea of this pot filler. I love to incorporate these in all my clients' homes, but then when you see the backsplash here, sometimes I think there's too much space there. And for me, the pot filler is what breaks that space up and creates some design that also has function. You can fill up your pot, spaghetti, you don't have to walk all the way to the sink. So it's serving both purposes, form and function. For the White's home, I wanted to combine the rugged, simple style of the husband with the classic look that the wife loves. The nice thing about the master bedroom is it didn't need a ton of updating, but for this room, it was really a cosmetic change that we did. But again, we're talking about the blend of rustic and traditional. Two people, two different styles, but one room. We installed new hardwood floors in here. As you see, we have this really pretty, delicate chandelier. I think the chandelier just adds a really sweet, special touch to this room. It really makes it feel warm, cozy, inviting. Now the husband really wanted a sliding barn door. I didn't beat it up too much. I left it pretty clean and simple, pretty stained. I mean, this is something that you can build. The rustic door and the chandelier and the headboard really balance each other out. Here in the bathroom, I think, is where you're really gonna see the biggest blend of both of them. You've got the marble backsplash, but the wood tile. You've got the marble countertops over here with the wood frame. So it's a really a blend of him and her. I really think this house was one of my favorites because it was blending two very different styles into one space, and it worked. You know, I try to design my clients' homes to be a reflection of their style and personality. When you're designing for two people with very different tastes, as in the case of the Whites, it can get a little tricky. I would say the entryway was the most challenging part in this house because I really wanted them to walk in and feel like it was reflective of both of them, so I needed to blend both of their styles. Traditional style with rustic style. 
I added this chair wheel here that has a, a traditional look, but it's not too formal, very simple. It adds some texture to the space, but it also really makes it feel warm and inviting when you walk in. It's nice because the walls don't feel so flat, but it's still at a space where you feel like it draws the walls out, but you still have room for artwork. But my favorite thing about this entryway is definitely the stairwell. The original stairwell was really dated. It was almost too traditional. So we ripped it all out and I designed this new stairwell that I just feel like has a little bit of a modern flair to it. It's super unique. And I just think it really sets the tone right when you walk in. In designing the Zans Master Suite, I really wanted to personalize the space to fit my client's Southwestern style. We achieved that distinctive look by keeping things clean but unique so it didn't feel too much like a theme. I love this Master Suite. We've got these brand new beautiful wood windows in here, but one of the things I really wanted to focus on was this accent wall. We had the cedar wood trimmed down. We added some stucco in here. This wall just adds a lot of texture and dimension in the space. Another thing I really like about this room are these hanging pendants. This is something, especially off of a wall like this, that adds even more dimension and more interest. Let's check out the master bathroom. You know, we really wanted to change things up here. Originally, everything was blue. Blue toilet, blue shower. We really wanted to lighten it up, update it. But on this vanity, I wanted to do something a little unique. I love these white oak cabinets. I love this really cool industrial hardware. But I think the coolest part about this is how this is elevated in the middle. So it's a practical countertop space, but there's also more storage. So this house really came alive in this renovation. And we got to play a part in restoring this home for this family. It was a really big honor for me and Chip. When designing the master suite for the Ferguson family, we had to make the most of the limited floor plan. And the best way to invigorate a small space is by paying close attention to the details. My client really loves marble and she wanted it everywhere in her bathroom. So I thought if we're gonna do all of the same surface, why not do a play on pattern? So on the floor, as you see, we did a herringbone pattern. On the wall and on this arch, we did a brick pattern. And then if you look here in the shower same material but it's just a play on pattern i feel like we've created a beautiful bathroom for these clients it's stunning but there's also great statement pieces that really set it apart let's go check out the master bedroom since the client really wanted a large master bathroom it really cut into the size of the master bedroom i was really intentional about the way that the floor laid whether it go horizontal or vertical i really wanted this room to feel longer than it really is and even with the diamond pattern on the wall it really elongates the wall it makes the room feel higher and taller than it really is this was a large house but there was a lot of fun design elements that we got to play with i really enjoyed working on this one When designing with the coastal theme for the Armoyan project, I didn't want to go too literal with it. So I used simple, thoughtful details to tie it all together and keep the design relaxed and calming, not overwhelming. I really love how quaint and cozy it is in here. The color on the walls I decided to use was a lighter blue-gray tone, but it still has that fresh, clean way about it. When you're trying to carry on a theme, you can keep it subtle. We have the sand and these really cool hurricane jars. Fun little glass things with seashells. My client loves shells. The lamps with the rope, but also this driftwood that we found um, here in Waco. It's stuff like this that I think even though we're in Texas, you can still have what you want. Let's check out the master bathroom. I really like this bathroom because it's not overbearing. There's a lot of texture going on and a lot of dimension, but it's not too much. I love these fun pendant lights that we chose, these rotating mirrors. We use a really light palette in here, softer gray on the floor. One of the things I love the most in this bathroom is this new shower that we got for our clients. We've got this really cool basket weave on the wall and then we have these fun pebbles on the floor. We've made their shower twice as big, but with this glass and all this texture, I just really feel like it makes a huge statement in this bathroom.
The Amorian project was a fun challenge because they had a style in mind for their home that I really wanted to implement without it feeling like too much of a theme, which was a little bit tough to do because my client was really wanting a coastal themed home. And now when you walk in, you don't feel like you're in central Texas. You feel like the ocean could be in the backyard. One of my favorite things to decorate with are antique pieces. I found these antique oars at an old shop here in town. And I think now when you see this, it really ties into the coastal theme, but it's not going too far to where it feels kind of cheesy. Another thing I wanted to carry on was just the idea of driftwood. We literally went to the lake and found some old pieces of driftwood. I thought it would make a really cool design statement in their fireplace, you know, in the hotter months when they're not actually burning fire in here. It's just a fun design element that adds that extra coastal feel. One of the rooms that I really feel like carries this theme the best is this dining room. Things like this light fixture with a jute hanging from it, this lighter wood top table, and even this artwork that my friend Clayton did. All these elements together really give off that coastal vibe that my client was wanting. The Childers were recent empty nesters and they really wanted to downsize. So this cute little 1920s house was the perfect fit for them. When I spoke to Stacey about the design, the main thing she said was, I want just clean and simple spaces. She gave me two colors she likes, white and blue. And anytime anyone asks me for white, it's never a problem because it's my favorite color too. You know, one of the reasons why I love working with white spaces is because really any color you add to it really pops and really comes alive. These fresh flowers really make a statement. All these boxwoods up here, it's just a really clean, simple contrast, but it's also one of those rooms you can come in and you don't feel cluttered. Your mind can really rest, stay at ease because it's just a clean and simple space. You know, the challenge with an all white room is still making it feel warm and inviting. The texture was really the play here in this room. Here with the fireplace, we had to add some brick here. But what I love about this is even though it's white, there is a lot of texture at play um, so that it still gives the room a lot of interest. I wrapped these books in different colored linen. Everything I decorated with, I really wanted to be a play on texture, but it's also still staying along the lines of clean and simple. With the kids out of the house, the Childers were really looking forward to downsizing. Sometimes that means getting creative with your smaller spaces to make them work. This bedroom is a little smaller, I think, than your typical master bedroom, but the clients really wanted a king bed. And so what do you typically design with? Well, a lot of times I have an end table by the bed, but in this case, there wasn't a ton of space. So we had to get creative. These little wall shelves, I think, are a fun accent. But they're also practical. You can still put stuff on here, your books, your clock, but it doesn't take too much space up, and it really adds the character and charm in this room. You know, another thing I really like about this space are these sconces. What's great about these lights is that they don't take up a lot of room. So even if you were to have, you know, your typical end tables, sometimes a lamp can be bulky. Something like this just adds a little more interest. I love the reflection it makes off the wall, but it's very clean and simple and incorporated that touch of brass that I know my client really wanted. Last but not least is the bathroom. It's really small, but it's packed with a ton of character. There are some elements about it that are original that I really wanted to keep, mixed with some newer elements that still have that timeless look. On the ceiling, when we removed the drywall, it exposed the natural shiplap, but I didn't want the space to feel too old and dated, so I really updated it with some simple, timeless, classic fixtures. What I also love are the built-ins. The built-ins were original. I didn't want to tear those out. We just updated them with new hardware, but it's just a great space for storage. And again, it just adds to the story of this space. For the Childers family, downsizing to a smaller home was a chance to clear the clutter and refresh their setting. As for Stacy, she wanted charm, she wanted character, but she also wanted simplicity. My favorite thing about this kitchen is the backsplash. My client loved blue and white, so we found this really fun handmade tile that I think really just sets the stage for this kitchen. I tried to keep everything else very simple so it wasn't overwhelming for her. 
You know, a lot of people when they're designing their kitchen don't consider open shelving. I think a lot of people are intimidated by it. They wonder, is it gonna make my kitchen seem cluttered? What I love about open shelving is it really gives the kitchen this feel of just an open, airy space. And what I do is keep it very simple. The key is grouping things together, not doing too much color if you have a great backsplash. But if you happen to have a more simple backsplash or no backsplash at all, this is where you can really incorporate color in your dishes. So have fun with it. You know, I think it really creates a statement. It's unique, it's different. The idea here is open shelving. Update your kitchen and it's really not expensive at all. In the Armorium project, Chris really wanted a music room away from the rest of the house. Since that space didn't exist in the original floor plan, we had to get creative. You know, this room was a really fun project because this was originally the garage. And I feel like one of the challenges with garage conversions is that even after the update, it still feels and kind of even sounds like it was a garage. I think the biggest change is just all new drywall, we added baseboards and trim, which really gives it a finished look. Now when people walk in here, this really feels like it was a natural part of the space to begin with. You know, the rest of the house really does feel light and airy, but in here, I wanted it to feel like my client's space. I mean, he wanted kind of darker tones in here. He wanted his music. He wanted things that were really reflective of what he's inspired by. So I did a more masculine fan that was a little bigger than normal. I also did darker floors in here, a really neutral gray on the walls. I even wanted to incorporate the wood that's on the bar that Clint made. All those elements are what really make it feel a little more masculine in this space. So really, I think the thing I love most about this room in general is that it's really reflective of my client and what he's inspired by. The Downs really wanted an open and welcoming entry. Sometimes in these older homes, there's interesting obstacles you have to overcome. One of the biggest challenges with this project was the layout of this house. Originally when you walked in, there was a huge fireplace right here in the middle, but you couldn't see the rest of the house. My clients really wanted an open feel. They wanted it light and airy in here, but with that brick structure that was really messing up the flow. So we played around with the design and the layout of this house, and I thought to make a grander entry, it would be really cool to do his or her offices in the front of the house rather than in the back. So as you can see here, I've got her office here. We added some really pretty wood French doors, but I wanted to add a transom over it so it made for a more dramatic entry right when you walked in. Over here with his office, we changed up the color a bit, made it a little more dark and masculine. But again, all the same trim work is happening, so there's a really great deal of balance. And then you've got this really pretty light fixture up here that just sets the stage and it really feels warm and inviting. But now you're not walking into a huge structure that's blocking the view. The Downs home is over 100 years old, so I wanted to create a very classic design that didn't take away from the original character, but also blend that with some modern touches. Over here in the dining room, this is the grand room to me. I mean, you have this really large chandelier. I like to do light fixtures that make a statement, and I really feel like this light fixture is bold, pairs well with this beautiful table that Clint made. But another thing we did is just play off all the natural light that comes in. We added a really cool window seat um, to just make function more in the space. They wanted more seating in here, so that was just a natural way to add it. Now onto the kitchen. They like the idea of blue cabinets, um, so we did lower cabinets that are blue. There's still a really classic way about this kitchen. We have the subway tile that they wanted, the really beautiful Carrera marble, and then he got his stainless farm sink, which is something that he really wanted. I think this kitchen is fun because there's a lot of mix and match going on. You've got a, a mix of metals, you've got some brass, you've got some stainless. We also did a really fun play on color. So I feel like when you see this kitchen, it's just packed with character. In the Downs renovation, the age of the house gave it a lot of character, but also posed some interesting design challenges. So here in the master suite, the challenge here was 
This was two bedrooms. There was no master bathroom and there was no large closet. So we ended up taking two small bedrooms and turning it into one large master suite. You know, I added some fun detail in here, some old shelving, architectural work that I think really ties into the age of the house. One of my favorite rooms in this house, though, is this master bathroom. Let's go check it out. So here in the master bathroom, I just love this classic play on color. We did a lot of black and white in here. We incorporated the shiplap that we found in the other rooms where we couldn't use it. We did it as a chair roll around so it still felt like the time period of the house. But in here we wanted to change it up a bit. I wanted to go with a black and white tile on the floor that cement. And what I love about this tile is it's super fun but there's just a classic way about it. I wanted to go bold with the mirrors, so we did these really cool mirrors that they make a huge statement. And I think in a bathroom that has ceilings this high, why not go big with the mirrors? Another thing that I really love is we did a matte black cabinet at the base, and then we paired it with a brushed brass knob and hardware, and I think it looks really good. I think what I love most, though, is that there's a timeless, classic way about it, but there's still some really unique design elements that we got to incorporate in here for our clients. Since the shotgun house originally had 700 square feet, that wasn't enough for the clients, so we decided to go up and add a loft. Now there's an additional 400 square feet to this space, and up here it's really fun because you've got the best view at the entire shotgun house, but you also have a view to the backyard. It could be multi-purpose up here. You could have a bedroom up here, office, and even a living space. What I decided up here was to keep it very simple so that the elements of the house were the things that really stuck out. I love the railing, the fun industrial pendant lights, and then you've got some decorative sconces over here that really frame out this beautiful wood window. I found these really cool vintage suitcases, so I thought it'd be fun to play with the design up here. We ended up mounting these to the wall, so now they have a new purpose as shelves, and they also make a really cool statement. From the beginning, the tiny shotgun house had a lot of big challenges, but in the end, the reward was huge. I think every design element that we got to incorporate really stood out. We love this house, and we were so glad to be a part of the shotgun house. So this is the master suite at the shotgun house and what's crazy about this master bedroom is that this used to be the kitchen. The existing layout really didn't work with our clients and so we had to reconfigure the space. What's fun about smaller spaces is it really challenges your creativity and it makes you maximize the space that you've got. Here we didn't have room for end tables so we just did these simple floating shelves. They don't take up really any room but there's purpose there and it really fits the space. And then with all the design elements that we blended in here, whether it be this oversized large mirror, this lower lying bed, all these elements make this room actually feel bigger instead of smaller. Let's go check out the master bathroom. I really wanted the bathroom to have a clean feel to it, almost like a spa. You've got the heavy duty concrete countertops with the white oak cabinets blended with this really fun, colorful tile. I think it really makes Big statement in here, even though it is a smaller space, you can see that every square foot of this is really unique in its design. This shotgun house was honestly one of our favorite projects to work on. There were a ton of challenges. This house was 700 square feet, very tiny space. And even though the footprint of the house is still the same, it feels so much bigger now that we've opened up the space, removed the walls, the ceilings go over 20 feet tall. Right when you walk in, you see this amazing oversized fan. You also see all these really pretty wood windows that start at the floor that go all the way up, so it has a really dramatic look. There's so many unique things to take in. I think that's why we really love this project. Let's go check out the kitchen. In here, we've got a really tight space to work with, but I really wanted to maximize as much of the square footage as we could. There really wasn't any room for a dining table in this space, so I had to think through every design element in the kitchen. I wanted to incorporate this oversized island so you had plenty of bar seats here so they could eat here in the kitchen. Now you've got this kitchen, you've got this amazing living space over here, but it's all open and it just makes the whole house feel so much bigger.
When I'm designing a kitchen, I always try to think about what elements I really want to stand out. In this client's kitchen, I started with just a very clean base. That's what they wanted. So we did white cabinets throughout, very simple, stunning backsplash behind me, but with all the white that we had layered in with the backsplash, the cabinets, and the countertop, there really needed to be that extra element of color. You know, one of the things you have to think about with a kitchen, when you're wanting to incorporate color, there's really not a ton of wall space you have to work with, which is why we wanted to do it on the island and the Vin Hood. If you don't want to do a paint color, you can also tie in reclaimed wood. The great thing about the island and the vent hood are these are their own units, so they can have their own character, let it all tie in, but then these two pieces can really be unique and different. Now when you step back and look at the space, it's very simple, it's very stunning, but it also has that contrast in color, which really adds a little more dimension to this space and makes it more interesting when you see it. This project was a flip house that Chip and I worked on and we just completed. And this little study nook is one of my favorite rooms in this house. I think what I really love about it is the idea that this was once just a storage room that had no purpose other than storing boxes, shutting the door, and kind of hiding the mess. What I love about it now is that we've lightened it up we painted the floors, we actually accentuated the vault. So the current vault that's here was already here because this was attic space. So what I wanted to do was just add a little more character in here, add the shiplap that we ended up staining and distressing, and then we added all these built-ins. All I did was work with the outline of the room, created a built-in little nook, these built-in desks, and this fun little reading nook back here in the corner. If you have a room in your house that you want to make more purposeful, livable square footage, work with the outline that you have, create unique built-ins, and if you have a vault, think of ways that you can accentuate and highlight the cool things about the space. A fun design element that we incorporated in this modern project were these really simple boxes. What I feel like makes this modern is it's very clean line, it's simple, it's pretty raw, and what I like about it is just the balance of it with the plaster behind it. You can really incorporate this look anywhere, whether it be the living room in this space, for instance, or a kid's bedroom, a playroom. You can think through this on a lot of different levels, even a mudroom, great for storage, but it also can highlight any of your favorite art pieces, your favorite books, so it really can go a long way. What's great about it for any space that you've got, whether you're modern, traditional, or rustic, you can change the idea of these boxes. Keep the concept the same, but change it whether you use reclaimed wood, slatted wood. What's great about this entire concept is you don't have to spend $1,500 on a piece of furniture. This all costs about $150, and it's unique. And as time goes on, you can add to it, take away, modify it. But I think it's interesting enough to really set the space apart.